Hello, I'm Steve Sass of Data Center Hawk. Uh, here at Data Center Hawk, we want to make it easier for our customers when they decide to expand into new markets, countries, or regions. We aim to provide the latest market information, so we decided to launch this series called Navigating the Latin American Data Center Market. With us today, we have my colleague and regional expert, Daniel Cajero, senior analyst based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Thanks for being with us today, Daniel. Hey, Steve. It's a pleasure to, to be here with you to, to talk about my market, Latin America, and to give our audience some aspects of our, our markets. Great. Well, just so our viewers uh, understand what, you know, what we're trying to do here, the idea behind today is to provide you some very quick thoughts on the overall Latin American data center market, and we will follow this up with other episodes that will cover other key elements like site selection, building, operation, and opportunities in the Latin American market. So let's let's get going, Daniel. And first of all, let's just so so our viewers understand the size of the market. Can you can you just give us some rough numbers of the Latin American data center market? Yeah, sure. So last year, 2024, our absorption was twice what happened in 2023. So right now we're estimating the total commission power here in Latin America to be around 1.3 gigawatt of power. And and we have that power uh divided across multiple markets most people when they think about data centers in latin america they think about queretaro mexico maybe because the proximity to the us but the, the actually the biggest market is sao paulo sao paulo alone leads the market with 44 percent of the, the region's power and we have around 500 megawatts of commission power here and another 1.4 gigawatts of our planet. And the number two market in, in Latin America would be Santiago in Chile with around 250 megawatts of commission power. And third would be Querétaro, not far behind, but with 230 megawatts of commission capacity. No, that's great. I mean, that, and, and the absorption in these markets have, has been pretty good, especially in Sao Paulo, right? Yeah. Uh, last year, we saw many players, land banking, some other players doing some major announcements, closing with some hyperscale providers in the built suit uh, kind of deal. And that's that's an important point too that we should mention is the the the, the difference between uh, self builds and and call up sites, right? And in the U.S., it's more it's like a fifty fifty. What what's the ratio in, in Brazil today? Well, not only uh, Brazil, but also Chile and, and Mexico, the ratio here would be 80 to 20, but that is starting to change. As of now, we have Microsoft here in Sao Paulo in the Great Campinas region. They are doing the construction of three sites simultaneously, and those ratios should be changing the next year or the fourth quarter of the year. Okay, so now we have an understanding of the size of the market and what are the key markets. The next question I wanted to ask you, Daniel, is um, what makes the Latin American market unique? I mean, both you and I cover the Latin American market. We, we believe it's the best market, but what, what yeah. makes it so unique? I think there is several factors to, to take into consideration, but the main one would be cheap land. You can find really cheap land near the our major cities or capital like Sao Paulo and, and near Buenos Aires at a great price. We have seen some land acquisitions to be around $30 per square meters. And that's like 100 kilometers away from downtown Sao Paulo to 120. Not only land is pretty cheap here in Latin America, but but also energy. And we have seen some investments from the private sector in renewables, uh, mostly in wind farms and solar farms. And some providers already made some deals with those companies like Scala Data Centers or Odata. They're buying from, from these renewable energy companies, cheap energy, like five cents per KVA. Yeah, I mean, energy is obviously key and the price of that energy as more of these data centers are going to be consuming more and more energy. I mean, people need to consider, uh, you know, looking for markets where the energy is, is number one, renewable, and number two, is, is cheap, right? So I think Latin America has a huge advantage over other parts of the world where, where you can't find this cheap energy. Yeah, we, we're seeing so these countries, those markets, they are starting to invest in renewable. We have seen Argentina make, man, making some announcements. They are building a solar farm there. We have a lot of solar farms and wind farms here in Brazil. And also Colombia is starting to, to catch up to this new trend. 
Yeah, the renewable story for Latin America, I think is is you know nobody. I don't think anybody around the world could tell that story. Um, between hydro, solar, and wind, in, in some of these markets, uh, the renewable story is is pretty amazing. So, um, I think people should definitely look into that when they're looking for for potential sites. Yeah. Now, I know we we quickly touched on on the market sizes, but can you just briefly touch uh, discuss the the market sizes? You know. And start with the biggest one first, and and then go down to the, the top three or four markets. Yeah, sure. So the the biggest market for Latin America would be São Paulo. We have uh, around 500 megawatts of commission capacity here, and there are several reasons to why to that because Brazil population is twice the size of Mexico and 13 times larger than Chile. So this mass population drives significant demand for that intensive uh, activity. So there is a lot of people streaming, gaming, in Instagram, TikTok, and that explains why the, our, our market is so big. But also, not only that, we have like a lot of renewable energy resources here that can sustain, can 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 support sustainable operations for for providers. And ESG is the word of the decade. So. Every company wants to be green, wants to be energy energy efficient. So there is no no other place like Brazil to address those issues. You can you can have a a hundred percent clean operation here. The also the the second biggest market would be Santiago in Chile with around two hundred and fifty megawatts. They have excellent uh, excellent connectivity. Their uh, political environment is stable. Their economic is also very favorable to doing data centers and and a really favorable business climate there. And the third market would be Querétaro. And Querétaro, it's an interesting location, of course, due to their proximity to the U.S. that can facilitate the connectivity between the, those two countries. And also Mexico and the U.S., they, they have some free trade agreements. Also, U.S. and Mexico, they have some free trade agreements, and that really simplified the international operation between those countries. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, uh, Cretaro right now, uh, it's unfortunate, and we'll talk about power, and, 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 but I think Cretaro could, have, could at, by this time, be a much larger market, but some of the power uh, constraints have, have held that market back. Um, and regarding Santiago, I, I do believe that, you know, they, it is a stable market. It's not as big a market as Mexico and Brazil, but it, it's continually growing, and they, they have some pretty large footprints from Google there. So I think that helps the overall market. Yes, about Santiago, we are, we are seeing some other hyperscales also uh, on the process of uh, having their permits to start construction. So this year or the next year, we should be seen on the news. So let's. Well, what about uh, emerging markets? You know, we talked Sao Paulo, Santiago, Creta. What 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 markets do you believe are going to be uh, emerging in, in the next couple of years and, and growing? Uh, emerging markets here in Latin America, uh, in Latin America, I would consider. Rio de Janeiro right now, we have seen some players land banking there, uh, a little far from downtown Rio de Janeiro, a city called São João do Meriti. We have seen Scala deploy a, a huge load in, in São João do Meriti. We have seen Odata also deploying there. Econix is it's finalizing their construction of RJ3. Away from, from Rio de Janeiro, another market would be Fortaleza. Uh, especially because they, they are a, a, a global connected city. They have several uh, submarine cables land there, about 15. There is also Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires, we have seen some players land banking there, like Sirium. They, they bought land a little bit far from downtown Buenos Aires. And, and lastly, I would say Bogota. It's an emerging market. They have the free trade zones there that offers incentive for data centers. So, those would be the markets emerging in the next couple of years. Yeah, what's interesting is a lot of these markets that are emerging markets, not all, but many of them are, are close to the, the, you know, the ocean, uh, their, their connectivity, submarine cable um, centers where, where a lot of submarine cables are landing. So we, everybody needs to keep in mind, obviously, a data center without connectivity is, more, is a warehouse, right? So you need the connectivity, you need the fiber, and you need to take that in consideration. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's let's move on now to power. Power is the name of the game, not just in Latin America but globally. So, just enlighten our viewers on on the power situation in, in some of the key markets. Sure. Uh, the the power situation in Latin America 
it's not immune to what we're seeing in the US or other uh, other markets in like Europe. Uh, in Brazil, the problem isn't in the generation power, it's distributing those powers, th th that power. So we, we actually have an oversupply of power here from renewable sources, and we can't, to, we, we can't distribute that uh, fast. So most players, they, they have been requesting access to the basic grid here in Brazil, but it's not only one or two players, it's actually three, four or five players uh, doing huge amount of requests. Uh, back in the days, in before the pandemic, a data center player would request a, a four to five megawatts load of that uh, for their data center. But now they're requesting 100, 200, 300 megas, and the grid can't support that kind of power. So the the government is working with the the providers to try to address those those problems, the, those issues, trying to to. Uh, supply that that power across multiple locations. And what what about Cretaro? The power problem in Cretaro isn't new. Uh, for years, there's been a, a big problem with getting the power where it needs to go. And when I was working for a Brazilian provider looking to expand to Cretaro, uh, I visited there, did some site selection, and power was already a problem. Cefi, the, distribu the distribution company in charge of the energy in Mexico, it's a state-owned company with no private investment and and that can bring some bureaucracy to to the progress to to, to the progress to the energy sector there yeah i mean uh i think credit it's unfortunate like i mentioned earlier that that has held back the market and you know we, we we obviously we've known we know of certain providers and hyperscalers that have built full sites and have had to wait even after the construction is done for for that power and there's many providers today that that don't have any power in that market so um hopefully they'll be able to fix that i know that there's some private funding going into the transmission lines some of the parks are getting involved so hopefully that that will alleviate the situation until cfe and and Sinasa can can fix this the, the issue probably in 2026 2027 so let, let, let's move on now to can you advise our viewers, you know, that are looking to go into the Latin American market? You know, what what top two, three points do they need to know as they enter the market? Well, I learned that when I was working for this provider, when we were looking to expand to, to Mexico, you have to you need to have time and patience to understand the culture. If you want to deploy a data center in Mexico, you can't do that from abroad. You can't do that from the US or, or Brazil. You, you have to hire local people. So I'll tell you here, at least in Brazil, uh, where I'm based, uh, if you're looking to deploy a data center here, you have to, you, you need to have someone local. You need to hire like a law officer or engineer office from here in Brazil. You need to watch out for regulations, uh, getting the zoning right, the construction permits, the energy access before uh, announcing your your facility. And that's uh, really important here. And I was also advise on Chile. Uh, Chile has some restrictive environmental regulations. Sometimes can take up two years before you get approval to even start work, earthworks there. We had an example last year, Google, they, they had their request for to start the works there, but the government was they, they had some concerns about the water usage in Chile, and they they, they suffered some droughts from from in, in the last years. And Google decided to to drop that that request, and they starting from zero. I mean, yeah, it's it's. I think every market is different. People shouldn't assume that the market that if you've been successful in one market and you go into another market that you'll be successful in that market. You know, we've seen it in Latin America. We've seen hyperscalers having problems in Mexico. We've seen American companies having problems in Mexico and Brazil. We've seen Brazilian providers going into Mexico and Colombia and having problems there. So everybody should not assume that what works in one country is going to work in the other. Everything you mentioned about having local people is, is very important. So I think providers that have invested in that have been successful in, in entering new markets. Yeah, uh, we, we, we've seen some, some Brazilian players now in Mexico, for example, Data, they, they, they have been very successful there because they hired local people, they understood the culture, they understood how the power game works there. It's not only because you have a letter from CFE saying that that part or that region has the power that, that actually will be there. 
So they learned that, and that's why they have their they're having their successful operation right now. Yeah, no, I totally agree. All right, so that was, I, I think that pretty much covers our our first episode here of an overview of the Latin American market. Thank you very much for your time, Daniel. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. You know, so for for our viewers, we hope that this you found this information uh, helpful, and if you like to a deeper dive into any of this information that we've covered today, the regions. In any or any other region globally, because we are a global company, uh, please reach out to us, and we'll be happy to provide additional details or put you in touch with the right people. So, you know, stay tuned for for following podcasts in the series, and have a great 2025.